What's going on, guys? This is Joe Kennedy coming back at you with David Capablanca for another episode of Macro Jabber. This week, I hit up David. I was listening to a podcast, and they were doing a State of the Union. So I hit up David. I'm like, we should hop on and do our own kind of State of the Union. I had a few things in mind uh, that I wanted to discuss uh, from about the last year, and we're just finishing up Q1 from this year, getting going into it. Um, so, David, appreciate you having me on. I want to start out. Let's talk about the short seller market, right? So State of the Union, where we are, and thinking about all of 2022, right? So I'm not a short seller for everyone else's context, but I trade. So I knew about like HKD. I knew about ILAD. I knew about some of these names. There's one other one that I'm blanking on that just went absolutely parabolic last year. Um, Want to get your sense of, of, of where the short seller's market is right now. All right. And just a little context to add to that. So... This is the macro show. So the Friendly Bear podcast, that one covers all short seller stuff. So I lag HKD. These are two tickers on the NASDAQ. Oh, actually, HKD was on the New York Stock Exchange. And HKD, um, it went from $10 to $2,500 in a period of like a week. And uh, it's controversial. It, it, it was like a manipulated Chinese stock because it was, it was based out of the Cayman Islands and it's Chinese related. At the same time, um, there was some rumblings that someone in in the Asia confused it for the Hong Kong dollar. And I think the Hong Kong dollar, if you converted the, the money, it was uh when it was around, I don't know, I I, I mean don't quote me, but it, when it went up a little bit up like to the fifties or something, it was equivalent to the Hong Kong dollar. So that are the buying around that area was all in theory, was someone confusing it for Hong Kong dollar, and so it just kept going and going. Then it became its own thing. It, I, Hong Kong do- when it said two thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> a share, it's not the Hong Kong dollar confusion anymore. It's something else. <laughs> so and ILAG was another Cayman Island one that jumped up out of uh, out of nowhere. It was alerted by um Chinese Tinder, like a Tinder swindler kind of deal, but a WhatsApp version of like Asian attractive ladies photos on on whatsapp just messaging people say hey my uncle's gonna uh my uncle has this company invest in it and you know you do me a favor you know like if you want a relationship with me keep keep buying <laughs> ILAG and um but but there was some short sellers involved in that loop and they shorted and and those girls tricked them the short sellers and they ripped them <laughs> so yeah so that's ILAG and HKD and um that kind of like set off the, the market a little bit last year as far as short seller uh side, you know, because for small caps, because um market was pretty rough last year for most short sellers. Um personally I did I I, I did all right. I actually prefer up to now, I uh prefer a market like that for the way I trade. And right now we're getting that same market pretty much again. Um I haven't had to, I remember in January, it was pretty, pretty wild. January was almost identical to something in 2021 or 2020. Just pick a month. And uh, it's it was very volatile. Uh, some short sellers were saying, oh, we're back to 2021, baby. You know, and, and I'm like, okay. I, I mean, you know, people, when, when, when the market's going crazy and, People are making money doing something. People get overly excited, you know, but like the reality was, okay. I mean, you just got to sit back and think about it. Like, okay, all this money printing, stay at home, um, business shutting down, people getting stimulus check, PPP loans, unemployment. Remember, there was $450 people were getting a week just to, to not go to work. You know, <laughs> if you're an Uber driver in the middle of the pandemic, why would you even want to even if you could drive, why would you want to drive when you can collect $450 a week and unemployment and a yep. stimulus check? And maybe you have an LLC that has the Uber driver. Uh, you're getting, you know, you, you have technically a business. Now you're getting a PPP loan for that. So why would you want to drive? So like yep. nobody talks about that. So people were, were using all that money and, and going into the market with it, trying to get rich, buying crypto, buying whatever garbage stock there was it was pump and dump um what do you call it uh 
promoters and stuff like Zach Morris and a couple of characters or they got arrested recently. So we had all that going on that that's why the market was going crazy. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it too, but like that was a major fuel. Yep. Uh, all this money was injected into the markets basically. So when people were saying January, this of 2023, I'm like, wait a second. Um, there's no more stimulus check. You know, it's like, we don't have people staying at home. The barber is not trading. I I, I mean, he maybe, but like the barber would always ask me. I, I remember I went three times to the barber in Puerto Rico at one point, and they asked me the same barber. I have to switch barbers. Though you know the but Joe the the barber in um freaking Anderson Pla- Planet Fitness. No, no Planet oh, Fitness. No, I never went there. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in Puerto Rico, right across the <laughs> office where Joe and I were trading at. Is a Planet Fitness, and that's like the Equinox. I know it sounds like like really weird, but Planet Fitness is the Equinox of of uh, Puerto Rico. Right. Yep, and they they have a barber in there and everything. So I go to the barber in there. It's the Planet Fitness barber. It's crazy, and the Planet Fitness barber shows me his phone. He's like, people like us are there for. You can tell right away. Okay, these guys are either for probably something to do with trading or something. So of course the barber wants to ask me about stocks and this and that, and he, he's asking me to take a, you know, give him a tour of my office and stuff. And yeah, it's too much. Now we don't see any of that. There's none of that. The barber's out, the Uber driver's out. So like, yeah, the markets are a lot. So the market are, are, are for short selling. It's, it's, um, I mean, I, I, you can look at the stats like on sites like Kinfo, which tracks, um, statistics of short sellers and traders. You can see a lot of the, these, the short sellers, um, the 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 results are are that similar to what was going on in 2020, you know. Interesting. Or yeah, 2021. Was, uh, 2022. I'm sorry. 2022. All the years are blending together. I was in the army in 2020 still when like the stimulus checks were coming out and like that's when Bitcoin was going crazy and Dogecoin took off. I think in late 2020, and I remember there were a few soldiers that I was working with, right? Like. These people have no exposure to finance. Before 2020, they couldn't have told you what a Robinhood account probably even was. And you have them telling you that they're like long, naked Tesla calls. And like, this is pretty split in Tesla. So a Tesla calls two, three grand, depending how far out in time you're going. And this is a person who's sitting there with no idea what a chart is, thinking it only goes up because they've hit it, you know, two or three times in a row. And they're like, oh, I'm going to keep buying these calls in Tesla. So... I don't know. Everyone has their own sniff test of like the 2020 investor, right? Like yours was the barber. I think about people that I worked with. I think about my siblings that have no idea what's going on in, in the world of markets and they were trading. So- my mom, my mom would text me and say, be careful <laughs> with the market. I saw it go down, you know, or like, like, what is my, like, come on, man. You know? <laughs> so I had an interesting observation the other day. So my brother was, he lives in DC, right? And you can, you can bet uh, on sports in DC. You can do gambling. It's one of the States. I'm not, I don't bet on sports, so I'm not too – I don't think you can in Texas, though. And for him to do it, I'm like, oh, you just fire up your DraftKings account, whatever, on your phone. He's like, no, you have to go to a gas station and go to, like, a kiosk and, like, do it in there. Like, go to an ATM machine, right? And gas I was like, station. Yes, he was in a gas station, like, as if he was about to withdraw money from an ATM. And for some reason in my brain, I couldn't, like, process, like, I have a friend going through an issue with PDT right now. How can we have a rule for PDT, but you could unlimitedly go and gamble every day on sports, right? Yeah. Uh, How does I that mean, make any sense? It makes no sense. Or like crypto derivatives. We had Spencer on. How are there no derivatives on crypto? Why is that like outlawed in the US? There are these weird investment vehicles that they allow the normal population to use, but not in the market related. You know, and, and so like, I don't know. So there, is there like an equation of like, laws and government how far they are behind technology i don't think there's necessarily an equation because, but like even the pdt for example like it's 25k like when was that rule made like in the 90s 25k was a lot more back then yeah like, i don't i don't know pump your brakes david yeah next thing you know they're gonna raise pdt to like 50 oh yeah <laughs> <Be crazy. laughs> it's gonna start keeping everybody yeah. out of the markets and, and, yeah, and yeah. i've talked about this and maybe you have a similar view i talked to um ranchero about this one time how like as generations evolve right like i'm 28 i'm a like a young millennial a really old gen z how many gen zers are going to want to like traditionally trade markets versus like being in crypto or be you know what i'm saying as opposed to like a traditional like indice trader 
or something like that? Or like, where are they going to find an apprentice that can teach them? Cause you meet people like Chris Katie or Steve hammer that were like back in the day trading on the floor, et cetera. Like where are those people going to be in like 40 years, like YouTube? Well, I'll tell you what, the Chris Katie's and whatever, like there wasn't many of them to begin with, you know, I, I like, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't in markets before, you know? I didn't, least... I didn't know anybody in my neighborhood growing up in Miami or like in my high school or like my entire, I went to a giant high school. I went to several high schools. I went to, I was involved in sports. I played a lot of, a lot of teams and growing up baseball teams and all types. I played chess growing up. I was in, um, you know, the chess clubs and I, I never heard anyone talk about stocks. I never knew anyone. Hey, I want to be a floor trader or something. Maybe it's, it's the area I grew up, but like, that's Miami, you know, Miami's a big city. So I never heard anybody talk about any of this stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, the, where are you going to find the Chris Kate? I mean, they were always rare to begin with, you know, because like, especially back then, the, the barrier to entry was a lot harder. It was, uh, you, you had to make phone calls for yeah transacting. You had to, uh, I think Katie was a floor trader. You had to be licensed to be on the floor. Yeah. You had to get a membership and all that. So, yeah. um, you know, when I went to New York Stock Exchange, for example, last year, late last year, they used to have, they don't have it anymore, but they used to have one of the floors was like a club. Like you go there and smoke cigars and you hang out, you gamble, <laughs> you know, and it was a gentleman's club, like, like a gentleman's lounge and stuff right. uh, for like high class. Now they don't have that, you know? So before it, it was more, so I think now it's, it's more democratized than anything. Anybody can just, so I have a, the friendly bear discord. Oh, you're yeah. in it too. Yeah. And, um, these are all retail traders that have educated themselves without, well, I'll say th there's like 30 people in the active one. There's like 500 people in the Discord. There's like 30 people in the private one that we trade intraday sharing knowledge. And these are these are people that are highly dedicated. Um, and I'd say like half of them are educated through like courses online through a mentor. The other half have learned from free sources like my podcast. Oh, yep. Like uh, Twitter, is YouTube, YouTube going hard. They they figured out a way to, and I did. I go to them for. I mean, if you look at the chat, I'm asking them about filings. I'm asking them about exercise prices in the file. Like this advanced stuff. Yep. Uh, I'm ask. You know, we're talking about the agenda of the big hands, and this is really complicated, sophisticated topics, and this stuff that like they figured out. They've almost gamified. In a in a very sophisticated, high level way, how to trade the market. Yep. I don't think you know um, that's ever been like that before. Even now, like if, if you know, so we have all these tools. I mean, look at the screens. Like we have all. I have like twenty things running, and this is like stuff that's available for everybody. It's not like broker Goldman Sachs only gives you this, you know. So, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. I guess you're right in that sense. You no, know, you just need you need uh, some capital and and uh, you know, but all the knowledge is, is is on the internet. It's not the dark. It's not the dark internet. It's not any some secret stuff. It's all there. Everything yeah. is there. Yeah, and you know? we've talked about it as well, more so off camera, and the experience component as well is like crucial. You yeah, know, just the screen oh, time and seeing things play out over and over and over again because you don't really know what you don't really know. And if you're just paper trading constantly, you're not really that invested. The paper trading. Yeah, I did a podcast recently on, on the Furu. Did you see that one? Yes. The Furu. Yep. Yeah, so she's been this this girl that's selling courses for five thousand dollars. And uh she's been caught paper trading. When did that happen <laughs> or what is the history of it, I guess? Cause some other folks in a in a WhatsApp chat that we're in were they also knew it right away. I didn't really know anything about that series until you guys pointed out but other youtube comments like on the yeah, original it's... interview had a ton of comments saying the same thing that you said yeah you know so but then but then you're always gonna have some people defending it you know what i mean there's a sucker born every minute you know it's just a human nature you're like there's gonna be you're always gonna have somebody defending it you know what i mean um i don't want to say the word but it's like the s-i-m-p <laughs> because i don't know i don't want to yeah <laughs> it's like because it's, it's a it's an attractive girl She's selling courses for five grand and it's like, okay, uh, she puts a lot of makeup on and you have these algorithms that, that they put it together and they pump it to the top of the, of the search, you know, um, these algorithms, I wish I could understand them more today. I saw like on Instagram, there's an algorithm, there's an AI, uh, 
for for Zoom that yep. puts your eyes facing the camera all the time. So even though I'm facing <laughs> my screen, the yep. eyes will be facing the camera and it's moving. You, and I mean, you could tell it's a little bit off. It's a little bit weird, but like it's it will it's, improve with time. It's it's yeah, it's convincing though. So the AI can figure out like what gets these SIMP guys to like get active. So it gets the attractive girl with the Kylie Jenner. So it looks like for the Kylie Jenner kind of makeup, that's what's like in yep. or these filters and it boosts it up to the top. So if you're, if you're in the, what a beautiful combination. So like if you're in the, in this space of, tr if you want to learn trading or whatever, there's not that many. Um, it's, yeah. It's pretty male females. dominated. Yeah. It's male dominated. So like the, the, the one female that cracked the code with the, with the makeup, and the figure or whatever that the algorithm like identifies and like boom, yep. put it's no competition for her. So it's yep. going to be to the top of the line. So if you're one of these guys that doesn't want to pay for a course and search for something and doesn't have enough solid intuition, like you're a little bit gull. Not, I wouldn't say gullible because it's just like, you don't know what you're looking for. I know like yep. when I, when I first signed up for courses, um, I didn't know. I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just like, trying to find a knowledge but i'm like i i can't i don't know how to decipher what's real and what's not <clears throat> and everything yep. looks so foreign like you have the girl has the screens and has like a neon light and i'm like damn that looks like it costs it money how, how does she get money for that you know because i'm i'm broke i don't even understand anything um you know so it's even if you're a smart person you can still fall for this yeah, yeah you get swindled you know so it's tough. I remember buying yeah. my first course was a huge emotional event. It was like, it was a Sanguchi course. I think it was two or three grand at the time. I'd never spent anything that much, you know? So I'm sitting there watching like YouTube videos and this, I'm like lying in bed and I'm like, man, can I do this? Should I do this or what? It was like, let alone spend five grand on somebody. That's so uh, so how did, how did you go about that? Cause uh, you know, Lucci's bit. So the thing with Lucci, like even back then, I didn't know that much, but with Lucci, I saw like a documentary he was on. Yeah, yeah, like reputable people, like this Hein Bodek guy, like a bald headed genius dude. I'm like, all right, you know, I, I think this guy could he's legit. Yep. So how did you how did you decipher? They have so much like YouTube content was the thing. And like we said at the beginning of the podcast, it came when the stimmy checks came. So the course is like three grand. I think I got over two grand in stimulus checks. So I just looked at that money as like I never had it really, you know? And so you so, so you use the stim you you Use this. Let me get this right. So you, the stimulus check, you you, in, you put invested it. In your, why is that such a hard concept for people? <laughs> I don't know. Like I didn't even I didn't necessarily I had a funded account, but it was hardly funded. It was like five k. It was tiny. But, I was. But you doing, you wanted to do something. That but would, I wanted to like actually the, learn what I was doing, right? Because you didn't want to go to Miami and, and rent a Mustang with the your stimmy. Yeah, or take a For picture two days. of Instagram. Yeah, no, no, no. I was, uh, <laughs> I couldn't do anything at the time either because everything was, well, I was in Texas, so it wasn't necessarily shut down. But I, uh, yeah, I saw that as the best investment. But I guess you're right saying that out loud now. A lot of folks are looking at it and saying, no, like, it's oh. no, because I, I went through this myself. Like I was in a shared office space. I think I told you the story. Yep. And there was a, a another guy in there. He saw me trading and he wants to trade. And we both got stimulus checks. We, the forex like, guy. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, um, I I put it in my account and I saw everything. Whatever I do, I need to. I was pinching every penny. I was just putting everything back into my account or like into my education somehow. Buying a book, buying a books yep. or whatever it is. And uh, not nah, he actually went to Miami for a couple of days with his friends. They pulled their money together. They rented a hotel and they got a Mustang for like three days and blew it, bought some shoes or whatever. Yep. It's gone. And we're, you know, it's like, I don't know, man. So everybody had a chance because I, I, you know, that was the, that was the time. That was a chance of a lifetime to like somehow find a way to make it really give it a shot because all that volatility was there. I mean, the yep. market's always going to be there, but like if you're studying for like two or three years, you know, four years, whatever it is, or I don't know, whatever time you put into it. And you're going to have a moment where like the opportunity I'll comes. Just, yeah. yeah. And like, that's, I mean, that's, that's your ticket right there. You know? So you saw it with the weed mania, crypto yep. mania, with COVID mania. So they come around and you got to be ready. I mean, some people, it takes longer, but like that is a real shot. And if you go blow it 
on some stupidity, you know, it's like that's that's Use a shame. Cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucci had a pretty interesting um, analogy that he used the other day. He was he was on a stream, whatever I was listening to him, and he was saying that somebody taught him that the market is like a big water trough, right? And you're an animal. You're not going to go and just keep chugging out of the water, right? Like really good traders know when it's time to go and take a drink and when it's time to step away. At least I've seen it with options traders. It might be different with short sellers too. But if you're like, like you just said, if you've, you've built up that education, the market's right, the time's right, like you can go there and you can fill yourself up well with water, right? Before you yep. squeeze too much and then you're puking it back out. Yeah. You know, um, and I think that's why it's always a, a longer term vision. If you do, if you're going to get involved with something, it's got to be, you can't just expect something to be given to you instantly, you know? Especially it's one just, of the hardest professions in the world. Yeah. So, you know, so like you, you, uh, it's like, do you deserve what you, what you got? You know, it's like, I don't know. So like, yeah, okay. it, it just comes out to that. Like, you know, just, just a, a, a healthy outlook. Um, on on um, how, what are, you know how to accomplish what you're set out to accomplish. So to the point of the stimulus checks, right, which is has caused an inflation, an inflation problem in the U.S., which I don't even know if it's directly tied to the stimmies anymore. Actually, before I get into my question, I heard something funny the other day. I saw it on Twitter. Actually, someone was like, "Remember when four billion dollars for the wall was too much? It came right after it showed another amount going to Ukraine because we've given Ukraine like twenty some billion already <laughs> so it's a funny anecdote but uh i saw an article the other day talking about global inflation etc and like the u.s was kind of middle of the road with seven percent in your opinion from because you're pretty observant to the world around you and in, in cognizant of 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 like your surroundings when you're out and about how do you think inflation is impacting the normal american today man that's uh that's a good question you know so I think about this, um, but like I, I'm trying to feel it. I guess I, I'm I'm well fi well off financially at this point where I don't feel it. But like I'm trying to pay attention. I see like gas prices. Uh, I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to imagine how it would have been for me if this was David three years ago. How I would I would probably be feeling it pretty hard. Um, groceries, gas, rent. Uh, rent, everything is creeping up. So, um. It would be squeezing me in a, in a way like, like, like a stock. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we all knew it was coming. I mean, in 2020, when I was broke, completely broken, like in the during the COVID, I remember I shaved my head bald because like there was no barber was open, and I was like, "What's the point?" You know, I, I couldn't yeah. go anywhere. You know, it's like, and I'm just studying the stocks. Um. I'm looking at these webinars that I, I'm in. I'm in some in the courses of this guy, Tim Lento. Shout out to Lento. And he's saying, yeah, you know, we're printing all this money. Eventually, it's going to call cause inflation. And I'm telling my friends outside of trading. Yeah, I think, you know, my what I'm hearing is there's going to be inflation from all these money printing. And it's like you get a, a it's going to be like dilution on a small cap stock. You know, when you add more shares into the float. Yep, it's diluted. It's like orange juice, and you start putting water into it. That's that's printing money. Now the yep. orange juice is not good, you know. So, I mean, we knew this was coming. You know, it's like what people don't want to admit it. You don't just so you got to prepare. You know, um, yeah, you know. Hopefully, it gets. I mean, I I don't know the solution because like I'm not a I'm not a thinking about that maybe you know more than i do but like i know in the past they had like quantitative easing and i guess that kind of went well until it didn't i don't know it's a problem know. that we're in today yeah i don't know but I, you saying that made me think like how would you even have like hedged yourself like i remember march of 2020 was when like the qe bazooka came in it's when, like, Powell said, we're basically dropping rates to zero. We're going to inject the economy with a ton of money. This is when, like, everything was announced. I remember it was on, like, a Sunday afternoon. And immediately everyone's, like, inflation, 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 inflation. And that's when I went out and started buying gold because I'm like, oh, shoot, like, I got to get it. But I was in the herd mentality because that's when gold was ripping. It was going to, like, all-time highs. Like, I was buying the highs of gold. I think like, silver, it, silver also, right? Yeah, all the precious metals were just absolutely ripping. But I don't even know if you gave me like the time and the place again. Well, obviously, knowing charts, I would buy the dip really hard in 2020. But 
aside from that, if you're the kind of person that had uh, a car payment, like your rent was like, say your rent is 40% of your income. I don't know how you hedge yourself against inflation, you know, or if they're even thinking about that. Yeah. How do you do that? I guess. You, I mean, like if you're going to wait tables at Denny's, like, you know, your hourly income, you have to hit a certain number of hours. And if you miss a week of work because you get sick with coronavirus or something, you're going to be behind on all your payments. Like, how do you hedge yourself? I don't know. Yeah. Unless, unless you're, you're uh, using your stimulus course to buy uh, stock trading courses. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> or <laughs> learn tough. a high income skill or whatever it is. A high, investing. I guess the only way to really edge though, that I can think of is to reinvest into in into knowledge, uh, into improving your self improvement or yeah or educating yourself on finance and you know all all types of financial stuff. So like, yeah. it, you know, the guy waiting tables or or whoever it is, if you're you know, they probably don't know about like uh, what's coming. They're blind. Right. They're not. Pre they're not prepared. So, yeah, yeah, I, that's a that's a tough question because like you know I I used to work as a as a waiter in my early twenties. I worked uh like six months in in Steak and Shake. That's the one. <laughs> remember this? You remember Steak and Shake? Yeah, I've been to Steak and Shake. And I used to work the night shift because I was also working at a at a Build a Bear during the day. Can you imagine? Holy I was I was, try, I was I was trying to save up for a better car, and um. And uh, yeah, the lady that taught me, uh, the, that trained me on Steak and Shake, she was a a lifelong employee steak of Steak and Shake. Yeah, yeah, like a waitress. And she said, yeah, there's some good money that comes in. You know, you can make, uh, you know, when you talk to them and you pay attention, they give you better tips. So her whole income was all tips. And she was a From she, Steak and Shake. <laughs> lifelong, lifelong. So how does a person like this uh, make Crazy it through? Himself. How know. does she how does she make it through this whole scenario? Like someone like that, full time yeah. employee. It sounds like an episode of Undercover Boss. You were in Steak and Shake, like learning for the tips from this lady. And I don't know, it's crazy. Um, and and another reason that kind of like jogged my mind as we were getting ready to do this podcast, I have a truck, right? I have like a like a 2015 Toyota Tacoma. It's not like a like a King Ranch 2500. It's and I was just curious what it's worth because used car prices are pretty high. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. So I, I did like the Kelly Blue Book, right? If you go on and you put, you can just put the VIN number and it pulls your vehicle up. And uh, I gave my email, whatever, and it blasted out to the dealerships around me because they want to buy it for cash immediately. So immediately I'm getting calls like, hey, 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 like we'll buy the vehicle from you. And this guy oh, called shit. me. And yeah, yeah, he's like, I, they appraised it at like 16 grand or something like that. Nothing like outrageous. This isn't like a hundred grand car. And uh, Or did, did it depreciate? Yeah, it's, it depreciate. I've had it since 2015, so it's like it's depreciated pretty because soon. in back in 2020 or 21, they it, like yeah, they it would have yeah, it would have appreciated. So it's depre. I think I got it's depreciated like 10 grand, so a decent amount. But he called me and he's like, "Are you looking to swap?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I was just curious." And he's like, "Well, what's your car payment on it?" And I'm like, I, "I don't have a car payment on it." And he's like, "Oh my goodness! Like, what a great position you're in as a buyer." And I don't know if he's just saying that as a car salesman. Whereas like the general people that he talks to, because you saw the TikToks a few months ago that came up on Twitter of people being like, I have an $800 car payment. And that's kind of been my sniff test recently of like the car prices and what people are genuinely paying. Just They're all behind. I, I saw some chart the other day, like everybody's behind payments. Carvana's going bankrupt. Like that chart was nuts. I don't know if you ever shorted it. Uh, I looked at it briefly. Um, I mean, CVNA. Yeah. So it's so. Cars are about to get repossessed. Is that what it is? I think that'd be like the big picture theory, but I, I think it's like the uh, 2008 issue because a lot of those auto loans get packaged up and resold, right? Yeah. So people have said like that that could be the next catalyst for the for the Great Recession. I don't know. That's just my take on. So so back in uh man bro this is crazy. So like in um 2018 I, when I was a a brokey. Uh, financially, <laughs> financially illiterate. I had this Prius that I had because I was driving Uber with it. I was trying to get money to yeah. put into my trading account and all the whole the whole vision I had was trading. But at the same time, I hated this Prius. So when I was done with the Prius, I just went to some dealerships, uh, some used car dealerships, like just to, just to see what was going on, you know. Right. And uh, I test drove like some old BMWs or whatever, and I'm just <laughs> I'm just nice. you know 
and uh and the dealer is telling me oh what what car payments do you have on this thing and i had big car payments at that time uh i spent like 400 500 a month for this, Golly, for this yeah back it's in crazy 2018. yeah this is 18 2018 that's and nuts. um it's <laughs> crazy way before pandemic and um yeah they were saying okay we can they, they were going to combine the the payments with the so the bmw was like less than the prius payment because it was used and i would pay like 700 bucks a month and they would take the prius off my hands <laughs> that was the deal and then people that were doing the deal people do this apparently this is a thing if they want to get out of a lease oh it was a lease it was like a three-year lease yeah if they want to get out which was a bad deal also yep. so if they want to get out of the lease earlier this is the way you go about it that was back then that's crazy I don't know. Some folks are just conditioned conditioned differently. In the army, I had a friend, and he asked me too one time. He's like, "Is your vehicle paid off?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's paid off." He's like, "Dude, what are you doing? It's time to go upgrade your car now." Yeah, see, like, that's the thing. So I wanted to upgrade. I was <laughs> like, "I'm tired of this thing. I want to upgrade." Yeah, I'm a, in my head. I'm like, "Why would I need to upgrade? Like, it works. It gets me from A to B." And some people are always just on this like perpetual wheel. And and we talked about this one time too of just like putting inch or loans into a totally depreciating asset. Like a yeah. car is never going to appreciate unless you're getting like a, a Ferrari or Lamborghini. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, back then, um, I couldn't, I could hardly afford the Prius. So imagine I was That's driving crazy. Uber. I was driving Uber and yeah, tutoring. I was doing some tutoring stuff. <laughs> and then I'm, you know, so people get these payments, uh, and they can't even afford it. That's... So like now it's catching up. Yeah. You know, so, so it's the same. It's, 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 it's probably even worse now. Yeah. You know, I, Dang. Well, appreciate you jumping on. This is a good little state of the union. Um, and it's always fun catching up. So we have Absolutely. some good things coming on the, uh, on the macro jabber front. So look forward to that. And uh, anything else you want to add, David? Yeah. So, so we got to keep an eye on this, uh, on this whole car payment phenomenon that's going on. That's like a, that's like an indicator. <laughs> yep. Most <laughs> you know? definitely. Most yeah. definitely. Absolutely. Because uh, Really briefly. So then the next thing is people are going to get really desperate and start selling off like their watches and uh, other things. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it's a domino effect. But yeah, um, Joe, yeah, always, always cool catching coming on. And uh, yeah, we'll start doing these things some more. Absolutely. It's always a fun time. All right, David, take care. I'll see you.